Hey, my name's David. Let's take a look at what you need to do to get started with Vapor. So first, let's head over to the Vapor document. Right here, I've got their install toolbox page up. Uh, and I'm just kind of going to assume that you guys already have things like Xcode uh, installed and you know how to run all of that. So uh, assuming all of that, let's just go ahead and grab the command we need to install Vapor. So we're gonna go ahead and use that command here and Vapor's uh, toolbox is just going to get installed. This might take a while, just don't worry about it, let it do its thing, maybe grab some tea or something while you wait. All right, so the Vapor toolbox has finished installing. Let's just head over to the desktop uh, and let's create a new project, Vapor New. And here you're going to want to type the name of your new project. So let's just call it uh, My Swift Server. How about that? All right, so now we've got a new project set up with Vapor. We're going to CD into My Swift Server, uh, and we can open it and check out some of the files inside. There's all kinds of files here that help to power your Vapor project. Uh, I'll just point out one of them really quickly. Package, oh, don't want to do that. Um, package.swift. Uh, you're going to eventually want more functionality than Vapor alone can provide, and so you'll want to include some new packages uh, into this package.swift file. Here you can see Vapor is included. Um, eventually you'll need more, but we'll get to that in the next video. For now, let's leave that, uh, and you might be wondering, especially if you're an iOS developer, uh, how am I going to uh, do anything with this project? Uh, there's no Xcode project file anywhere. Well, we don't have an Xcode project file yet because we haven't created it. The way we're going to do that is by coming back to the terminal and using vapor uh, Xcode. Very simple command. So this is actually going to take a look at all of the files uh, inside of this directory here, uh, and it's going to uh, build an Xcode project that uh, takes all of those files into consideration. Something important to note here is that if you add a new file after the Xcode project has already been made, you're going to have to build another Xcode project uh, because the one that you built previously won't know about that new file you just added. That's not immediately obvious to someone who's new to Vapor, but just keep that in mind. As you add new files, you're gonna have to rebuild that Xcode project. All right, so uh, the Xcode project is done being built. You can see it here. And in the terminal, it's actually asking us if we want to open it with Xcode. Uh, pretty convenient, so we'll just hit Y for yes. And now Xcode is opening with this project. Let's full screen here. Uh, and now uh, it's, it's pretty blank. It doesn't open up to anything, really. You can kind of expand a few things here and go digging through, but the first thing I like to do is head straight to our main file. You can do that with Command-Shift-O, type in main, and then hit Enter. It should be the first result. And now you can see what we're working with here in the main file. Uh, let's just go over here at the top uh, and switch to the app which is actually going to be uh, your server. And now we're going to do command R to run that. Don't worry if the build time uh, is a little bit long. This is just the first time we're running this project and so it's got, it's got to dig through all of that to make sure it knows what's going on with everything that's provided. All right, build succeeded. Uh, any second now we should see that our server is running here at this uh, automatically provided local uh, host address. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if that's working. I'm just gonna jump over to Safari, open a new tab, and go to um, 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 colon. And you can see here that it works. We've got our Vapor logo and we've got text letting us know it works. Everything's working, congratulations. You just ran your first Swift server. But we haven't touched any code yet, so let's go ahead and jump back over to Xcode and actually do something with our Swift server. Uh, here we've got a couple of lines here. Uh, this is referring to a post controller, which we really don't need to deal with right now. Uh, this here uh, is kind of defining the activity for the welcome or it works page we just saw, so we can leave that there but let's add a little more functionality. So 
Uh, just a quick overview. This droplet instance is basically our server here. And right here, we've got um, a method here defining a get request. And there's no path defined. So if they do a get request for our server, they're going to get that it works page. Now let's define our own request method with drop.get. And let's do hello for this one. Up here, we're going to have to take a few things into consideration, actually just one, request in. And that request is going to contain any extra information that might come with this get request. Um, here, inside of the method, let's just return something very simple. Hello world. And now we're going to have to rebuild and rerun our server. So you can go ahead and stop. Sometimes I just hit Command R without stopping. That works just fine too. And now it says build succeeded. You'll notice that it built a lot faster that time. Uh, we're still over at the same address because we haven't changed that. And now if we refresh, we still get the it works, but we've defined a new path here, hello. And with hello, we can just add that here. And now you can see the text we defined, hello world. Congratulations, you just defined a path and functionality for that path for your Swift server. Uh, in this case, we made it say hello world. Of course, you can make it do whatever you want in this space here. Uh, and so we can even change up functionality a little bit. Let's try a get request that takes a name into consideration. So let's do drop.get. Uh, here, our path is going to be hello again, but let's actually take into consideration a string parameter. And now we're going to do the same thing over here with request in, but we've actually got a second parameter here. So let's, so make sure to get that in there. And then down here, we are going to use that string. So let's do return hello placeholder string exclamation point. That is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and run that. And then we'll jump back over to Safari. If we do the slash hello again, it's still going to be hello world. Uh, but now if we add a string to the end of this path, let's just try uh, David. We'll put in my name. And now you can see it returns hello David. And that's because it's using that second function there. It's taking it into consideration the second string we've added to the path. So uh, that's pretty neat, right? Um, with most web servers, uh, web APIs, you don't really want to be providing all of your information within the string there. It doesn't hurt to do that for some things. But usually, you'll want to provide that information in a post request. So let's go ahead and try that here. We're going to define another function for our server with drop.post. And we're going to do hello again. And we don't have to add anything else here because the data we're going to be getting from our request will be inside of the request object. Here, we'll want to uh, set up a guard statement to pull that data out. And we'll do that with guard let string equal request dot form data. That's where our string will be contained with a key of string. And if you use guard statements a lot, you might assume that we're going to do something like as string. Uh, but in this case, we're actually, that's not going to work for us. Uh, the best way to do this here is with string. And then we've got to deal with a few optionals here. So let's throw those in. And all right, we've uh, got what we need. Now, if that fails, we are going to return fail to retrieve string. All right. All right, so now we've got our string parameter. Let's go ahead and use that in our return. Return hello placeholder string. And instead of an exclamation point, let's use a dot just to kind of differentiate it from our get request uh, defined earlier. And now uh, it looks like we should be able to run this. And now to provide the string parameter within the form data, let's hop over to Postman. If you haven't used Postman before, it's a great tool for testing out APIs. Uh, we are going to test ours right now. Here we can go ahead and set up a new request for our local host. Uh, 
this here is going to be 8080 and hello, because that's the path we've defined. But also, if we go back to Xcode, pay attention to this here. We uh, made a post request, so let's go ahead and change this here from a get to a post. Where are you? There you are. All right, so now if we, let's just test this out. What happens if we just try that? We get failed to retrieve string. If you recognize that, that's actually the error that we defined here. If we don't get a string from the form data, then it's going to give us that failed to retrieve string text there. So let's go ahead and provide a string. Uh, the reason why it's not getting one is because we didn't provide one. Uh, so here in the body with the form data, we're going to provide a key of string and a value of vapor. All right, so now if we go ahead and try to send this with our new key and value, we should get hello vapor. So let's end the video here. This is a good place for you to mess around a little bit, define a few different paths. We only made paths for hello, but uh, maybe you might want to try something new. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to decide what uh, that is going to be, uh, but please experiment with it. Make sure to take a look at the Vapor documentation. You can find that at vapor.codes. There's a ton of functionality there. It's well documented, uh, and you can see that there's very good potential for something like this to become the future of server-side development, back-end development. Um, I'm an iOS developer and I get really excited about the fact that I can spin up my own server with relative ease now and now so can you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, keep an eye out for a second one I'm going to be making on how to incorporate a database with Vapor, specifically Mongo Kitten.